as we go along, we want to make this interactive and, and a back and forth. And so now I'm really happy and glad and happy to introduce Simona Gerzon, the Senior Director of Brand Activation for Staples, who will lead the discussion. Thank you, Simona. Take it away. Hey everybody, I'm super excited to be here today. So thanks for having me. Um, definitely encourage questions. Um, I'm going to have like a little bit of a presentation, but I think there's going to be lots of opportunities to really just take all of this in and figure out how it honestly applies to your business. All right. So without further ado, um, I'll grab the slides whenever you have a chance, Aaron. Awesome. All right. So let's uh, let's take a look and see what's um, what is integrated marketing. So it is in the most formal definition, a strategy for delivering this unified, holistic approach and message across all your marketing channels that your brand uses. That's the formal defi definition. Mine, it is a multi-touch experience that really allows you to reach your audience with a consistent message, really wherever your customers choose to interact with your brand. And best of all, no matter your size, no matter the business size, Integrated marketing can honestly work for you and it allows you to reach your customers and connect with them and both current and prospective in new and different ways. So today I'm going to share um, six integrated marketing takeaways that are going to allow you to reach and connect with your audience. Allowing you to really build those deeper, more meaningful connections with them. And this goes honestly beyond the transactional experience to really more of an integrated experience that allows you to tell your brand story across touch points. All right, so we're going to dive in. The first one, first takeaway for today is let's learn your customer journey end to end. Uh, let's go to the next slide real quick. So there's a couple of examples here that actually we've used recently on the Staples retail side of the house. Um, we recently launched this Future of Work campaign, and it's you know, all about like innovative products, inspirational solutions for workers and learners and small businesses. And we thought about the customer journey in a couple of different ways. So you always want to think a bit about it from both the active current customer perspective, as well as your acquisition customer perspective. So there's a couple of examples here. I'm not going to necessarily go into the full detail of all of the flows. But one of the things that's just good to know is that as an existing customer, they're part of your current, let's say, database. There's somebody that you, you know you are able to reach out to already. So you want to treat them differently than somebody that's completely net new to your world, right? So with a, like George, for example, our active current customer, you know, we're able to talk to him through email, right? That's definitely one approach that we can do. Another way that we do it is because we know who he is and we have his mailing information, we're actually able to send him a direct mail piece that allows him to further interact with our brand. We then know that when he comes into our store, as an example, we have additional ways that he can connect. We have, we know he's a small business, so we have relevant products that are there for him. We have QR codes on things that allow you to go to a digital experience where you can discover more. And actually both that, if you look in the bottom left, actually that is called our possibilities book. It's um, kind of a beautiful magazine that brings to life uh, innovative products and inspirational solutions for customers. And so we sent this as a direct mail to customers with a bit of an offer, and it also has QR codes to be able to discover more. So he is seeing several different touch points across his customer journey that have a similar message in them. So he sees it in an email, he sees it in a direct mail piece, he sees it in signage when he comes into stores, he sees it on our digital experience, he sees it in what you see in the bottom right is actually a, um, a bag stuffer that we give to him post-transaction to continue to do that. And one piece that I didn't necessarily hit on is the associate. Very huge, huge piece of your customer journey. So whether you have literally one employer associate all the way to thousands, that ends up being super relevant and something that you always want to incorporate in your customer journey to make sure that they're, you know, kind of talking the talk and doing justice to your brand, just the same way that your marketing materials would or your packaging would or anything like that. So that's, I would say, more of the George experience. The Morgan experience on the right-hand side looks a bit more at the, let's say, the acquisition customer. So here, you know, we don't have our information today. So we have to figure out how do we go and find these kinds of customers that are interested in the future of work, in remote working, working from anywhere. So what we say is, all right, we're going to hit her up on social with something that is intriguing and something she wouldn't necessarily expect to see from us. 
We also are working with influencers. That might be somebody that she does follow, that she is intrigued in. So that is another way and another approach. And then all of a sudden she starts seeing um, a unified approach to the message that she wouldn't have necessarily expected from Staples to begin with. And then she, let, she, she comes into store and in there she sees some of the same things she saw in both social and through the influencer. And then she sees additional things that around the digital experience, around how the associate is speaking to things. And then all of a sudden she walks away and she's like, hey, I actually, I never expected that Staples could be there for the future of work and the fact that I'm this like mobile and on the go, like digital nomad and the way that I would have expected that they did here. Because she saw it from a couple of different angles outside of the norm. She didn't get just an, another email potentially here. She actually got it through an influencer that she trusts. She's already following them. Right. So for her, that's a voice that she believes in and trusts that she's allowed to then go follow and take on, um, you know, being able to discover a new brand that way. All right, let's move to the next one. All right. So after customer journey, the next big takeaway is to really use every touch point to your advantage. This is a biggie. All right. Next slide. So um, Emily Sanchez, who's a person on my team, um, who's wonderful, coined this awesome term called the Ferris wheel of integration. And honestly, we love it. It is something that you really want to think through um, throughout, honestly, anything that you do within the marketing world. You want to make sure that you're hitting on all the touch points. So when you say integrated marketing, that means you're talking the same talk everywhere. Every touch point that you have to your advantage, you want to use, whether it's your website, whether it's a note card, whether it's a direct mail, an email, a promotion, signage, your associates, do they have a talk track or your employee, do they know what to say to a customer when you're trying to speak to a solution? You know, are you having a consistent message in social? Are you using your mobile experience as best as you can? You really wanna hit on every single possible integrated touch point as much as you can, because that integrated experience is gonna be so much more valuable than doing separate messages in different touch points or honestly not leveraging them all. The example that I just had given you before around the customer journey is really the perfect depiction of this. Morgan might see things in different places than George did. They may not even interact with your brand in the same places. So you always wanna use as many possible um, integrated touch points as you possibly can. Um, interestingly enough, we actually worked recently with a company out of Oregon co called Sip Herbals. I wanted to give them a little feature because one of the reasons that I did that is no matter your size, I said this before, um, you can do this integrated experience across touch points. It doesn't matter. So, you know, or Letha Smith, who owns this company, you know, they're posting on all kinds of social platforms. Their web page is beautiful and has that consistent story. Their packaging has a consistent story. The note card that they put in their package that allows for the unboxing experience is another touch point that has that. So they are just one example of how you can go and you can take it across the board where you can truly um, have that integrated experience. Next slide. All right, so third one. You want to build an activation plan that's consistent across touch points. Next slide. So um, as an example, I mentioned that we launched this future of work campaign recently. And you, what we wanted to do is we wanted to have one message, one message that we continue to have over and over and over again across all of our touch points. It is something that proves to be super valuable for, for a variety of reasons. Number one is it creates some simplicity in the fact that you have one. You have one message, maybe two, where you're repeating that over and over and over again across touch points to your audience. And it's super consistent. It allows them to see it over and over again and associate it with your brand. So as an example here, we launched this possibilities for the future of work. On the left-hand side, you can see this is our magazine, our book that we've created that has all of our innovative products and solutions. We also use that as a direct mail piece. So the middle shows the digital experience and how it's consistent there. You can see our social post. You can see the back stuffer. You can see the animation that we use in social. They're all connected to each other and all allow for that consistent approach. All right, next one. So our next takeaway is that you really want to connect through stories that meet your customers' needs. So um, I mentioned 
one of the things that we had done is we had created um, something called possibilities, which was all around this, you know, innovative ways of going to market around innovative products and inspirational solutions. One of the things that we wanted to do was you want to connect with your customer in a way that goes well beyond just the product, right? Like we could, we could potentially share something like this and say, we sell shipping supplies. We could do that, but it doesn't connect with the customer at all. So one of the ways that you want to do that is you want to figure out like, what do you want them to walk away thinking or saying? So as an example here, we want them to say, my customers can feel the love and care I put into my products before they even open their package. It's like the icing on the cake. That's how you want somebody to feel. So we wanna make sure that our customers, they know that we have premium shipping supplies and all of that, but it's done so through a story. And it's done so in a way that really connects with the audience. It says, hey, your customers, they're gonna care about an awesome unboxing experience. We're gonna show you that, but that's something that's relevant here. We're gonna also show it to you digitally to make sure that you realize that that's another touch point that's gonna share that same story along the lines. Let's go to the next one real quick. Here's just a, another example. It's, you know, we have a solution where you wanna be able to have a product, an innovative product that certainly is awesome in small spaces, right? So it says, turns out no apartment is too small for a legit workspace. If there's a wall, there's a way. That's what we want somebody to walk away with. So again, we could sell this as, hey, we have you know, this table that folds up. That, that is definitely a way that somebody can sell it, but that just feels super transactional and doesn't necessarily connect with your audience. So the way we approach it is, what does the customer need? What is the insight that helps me figure out how best to relate this to my audience? And so in this case, we figured out, hey, this is amazing for those that have almost no space at all. So let's find a way to connect the audience in that way. And so we have it on our site, in social, digitally, um, and even in that possibilities book that I had mentioned as well. I think I have one more example. Um, this is our mobile workstation. So it's all about being productive on the go. It's great for a digital nomad. So we show it um, kind of in situation, which is, hey, like you can use this in a place where you're always on the go. You're in a coffee shop. You need to be able to have a certain space that's yours. So we talk about how it's made to travel how it's great across different scenarios that you might encounter in your day-to-day -day life. And we find ways of extending the message in a, something that's like relatable. So here, you know, we talk about you know, public Wi-Fi protection. It's something where you're like, well, that doesn't really have to do with mobile workstation, but it does. Because if you're on the go, you want to understand, hey, how do I protect myself so I don't get a virus when I'm like randomly working in a coffee shop? So bringing in content and additional um, solutions that just tie really well with it is another form of integrated marketing that just proves super successful. All right, number five. So we say test and learn and evolve over and over and over again. Um, I literally live and breathe this one daily. Um, go to the next slide real quick. I think it's just a couple of quotes. Um, we are constantly learning from what we've done. Um, sometimes it's worked really, really well. And sometimes it really hasn't and you completely pivot and that's actually completely fine. So the nice thing is that this is also an opportunity where you can play into the fact that, you know, you may not be able to do everything all at once. So perhaps you test something small, like the direct mail that I had mentioned before, we had never done that actually before this October in terms of sending that beautiful possibilities book directly to customers. And we said, you know what, let's try it. Let's see how it works. Let's see if all of a sudden some of the great customers that we sent this to, they came into the store and they mentioned it, or they interacted with the offer that was on it. Or if let's say within three or six months, we see that their engagement with our brand has evolved and changed. Those are things that we look for. And really testing does allow you to try some things out that you may not have done before. Like I wouldn't necessarily always go down the same path where I'm gonna do email always. The reality is customers and like marketing landscape has changed like crazy. You know, think about it for yourself. Like I, I have probably a thousand emails that I get a day on, from a variety of different places. Sometimes I'm looking at them, but the reality is, you know, email isn't always the place that you're going to capture my attention. So of course it comes back to the whole integrated experience across touch points. You know, you want to make sure that you have that message in new places too, places that you wouldn't always have thought would be the kind of the low hanging fruit place to find your customer. You want it on your website. You want to talk to your customers through social. You want interesting content out there. 
And then you want to try some new stuff. Maybe you throw in an awesome like um, note in your unboxing experience. Let's say you're an online seller and you want to send something to your customer. Throw in a note, a personalized note in there with an opportunity to share their unboxing experience on social. Something like that is something you can test. And honestly, either the customer is going to post about it and you'll know immediately if it worked. Or you can always say, hey, it just wasn't worth the investment. I didn't necessarily see the fruits of the labor for something like this. But testing and learning is, is a great opportunity to um, really play into the integrated game. And then next slide. I think this is our last one. All right, one more. Scale your budget at any size. So this is an important one because the reality is, you know, budgets are not endless. Sometimes they're extraordinarily tight. Um, and it's one of those things where, honestly, even if you're a multi-billion dollar company or, you know, literally just starting out, this is a scenario where you always have to keep an eye on what's worthwhile. However, the definition of what's worthwhile can be different all the time. Some things are very tangible and measurable and some things aren't. So, you know, as an example, I had mentioned, like, we're starting to do a lot more storytelling on our side of the house. Sometimes that storytelling, it's not attached to a transaction or a coupon or an offer. So that makes it a lot harder to measure. Um, it's one of those things that takes a little longer to measure. You know, so it's like I could have a customer where in six months or a year, they are way more so engaged than they ever were before. But within three weeks of me sending an offer, they may not be yet. You know, so it's it's going to take some time to understand whether you're getting brand perception, brand awareness, brand affinity that can really take honestly, six months, a year, two years plus, it takes so much time to build that. But what you realize is that the value to your business is going to be that much stronger by looking at things like that versus looking at just transactions alone. Transactions alone and that short-term win is exactly that. It is a short-term win and it's not a guarantee of loyalty. So you really want to find out what are your customers' needs? How do I tell them a story that actually resonates with them? and then go from there. And the best part is that, like I said, you can do this on any budget. You really can. Use your own vehicles as much as you can. So for example, your own um, social platforms, your own website, your sending email, definitely still use that. You know, all of those and your associates. I definitely want to mention that. I always say that about Staples, like our biggest marketing asset by far are our associates. They live and breathe your brand. They work there every day. So if you can equip them with the right information to share this, you're golden. I mean, literally, it's just like advocates and ambassadors for your brand. So don't forget that as an avenue. Um, and then, then you can go into the paid world, right? So definitely social and influencers and things like that. But you don't necessarily have to spend a fortune on it. And as I mentioned, you can also test things out and just see if some of them work. But I would absolutely encourage you to try this integrated approach um, no matter your budget and whether you're starting out or somebody that's a little, you know, more seasoned and has been out there for a long time, there's some great opportunities there. So we have our six. So just going to repeat it one more time because I think that these are, there, there's some really helpful six and I'm telling you, we just use them now for this campaign that we just launched. So it feels so fresh and so relevant that I just, I want to reshare them. So learn your customer journey end to end. Use every touch point to your advantage. Build an activation plan that's consistent across touch points. Connect through the stories that meet your customers' needs. Test and learn and evolve over and over and over again. And then scale your budget at any size. So these are six uh, meaty ones, but hopefully very helpful. I think that's it. For the formal presentation, I think that's it. Would love to take honestly any questions. I'm I'm that was, that was terrific and substantial and so much to dig into. And we have time now for audience questions. So drop any questions in the chat. We want to make this interactive. And I'm going to start out with one. Um, given all you said, and it was interesting talking about the notion of discovery, uh, the, the discovery, uh, but also being able to measure and what's not measurable. And these are all elements of marketing. Some things we can measure, some things we cannot. And the, the test and learn and the iterate um, was, was an important takeaway. I'm curious about pulling back and just giving sort of just, I would love to get your bird's eye view within all this context of the marketing landscape from a post pandemic point of view and what that means for small and medium sized businesses today. 
I, lo I lost you at one point in that. I think I think I heard. Uh, can you just repeat the tail end of what you were saying? I just want to make sure I got your question. Yeah, just from a you know, given all that you offered, what your bird's eye view of the marketing landscape is in a post-pandemic world, and what that means for small and medium-sized businesses. Yeah, I think um, the big thing is that like people's minds have really like changed. They've shifted. The way they're interacting with brands has shifted. I honestly think that the the love for small business has gotten that much stronger. Um, so I think if anything, that is, um, it's just awesome to see. Like I, I'm a huge proponent of that. Like we support tons of small businesses. So I just like from a personal standpoint, I actually love that we've moved even more in that direction. Um, but it's, it's evolved quite a bit. I think you have to capture your audience attention in new and different ways that you may not have considered before. You know, I said before, it's like, yeah, you can do an offer, you can do a coupon, you can send an email, kind of like old school tactics that they can still work. They can definitely still work. And I think that there's something there. And I'm not saying close the door on that, but start thinking differently about how you're engaging with people, because I think people are tired of seeing the same thing. They want, they want something that's relevant to them. It's like, help me see that what you're doing is relevant to my needs. And so I think that's that's the biggest takeaway. People have, they don't have a lot of time to waste, you know? And I think that's something that people have seen that much more with the pandemic. So it's just like, make it relevant to me. Show me why I should care. And then, you know, obviously the integrated part of it is just do it everywhere. Personalize it. And it's interesting now, it's sort of like, this is the time for small businesses and small businesses are hot. And we're seeing that in the data, shoppers moving away from the big, brands to the small businesses so leverage that so we have a question already for you how do you different kinds of messaging visuals without looking super messy and not cohesive that's interesting so Given the whole integration theme. yeah so um sorry i lost you again at the very beginning i think you cut out so it's different messages that are not that are not cohesive is that fair Exactly. How do you test different types of messaging visuals yeah. without looking super messy and not cohesive? Yeah, so I think there's a couple of different ways to test. So one way of testing is to use the exact same message all along, but potentially trying different vehicles. So that's one way of testing, which is like, I'm going to test into direct mail. I'm going to test into a new social platform. I'm going to test a TikTok video. I'm going to test doing something with an influencer. So testing could be done at the vehicle level. And it could actually be a consistent message that way. Another way to test, you know, to this point is you can actually test different messages and you can try a couple of different things out. I wouldn't necessarily recommend testing tons of different messages at once because I think you're you're not likely to get the best read. But I also think that there's I mean, there's certainly like email software and social opportunities where you can test different messages and see which one interacts better with an audience. So there are you know paid platforms that you can use for something like that. Or you can say, I have this message and this message. Both of them ladder up to the same umbrella message, which I actually think is really important. You don't want to have these random messages that don't play into each other in some way. Like I had, think I had shown the three stories were examples of three different kinds of innovative products and solutions that we have. And we're going to actually use them all. Over the month of, let's say, October and November, we will use them all. And those are different messages. However, they all roll up to the umbrella message of for the future of work. And that has to be there because if they don't ladder up to some bigger message that you have, the customer is going to say, I don't actually even know what they're trying to do here. It feels like very disconnected with their brand. So yes, you could test a couple, two or three, and it's probably different depending on the vehicle that you test it in. Um, I wouldn't necessarily go crazy with testing different messaging. And then my number one recommendation is just to make sure anything you test ladders up to a bigger overarching umbrella message. So a unifying theme message at the, at the uh, you, can you share with our viewers the platforms that they, they can use? You mentioned platforms that, that could help that out. Yeah, I mean, um, honestly, I think any of the social platforms would allow for something like that. And then, you know, depending on who you use as an email provider, um, I think they can help with a lot of it too. Usually testing is embedded in there um, okay. where, where you can try, you know, I'm going to try an A, B, and C message to different audiences and see which one resonates best. So I think your email provider can absolutely help. And then, you know, through social testing, I believe you can do it really through all of them, through Facebook, through Instagram, through TikTok. You can say, I would like to try these three things at the same time. Can you let me know which one's resonating best? 
So those are probably some of the biggest places to try it. Um, you know, at least that's the places that we've seen it most is probably email and social is where we play around with a lot of the testing. Got it. And you get that data. I'm curious yeah. about, you talked about the customer journey, and this is something that, um, you know, in, in, in forming business campaigns and how, I'm curious, how, what's the most important thing? I mean, there's always to say, what's the most? There's so many different elements to, to anything, but um, in terms of what small and medium sized businesses should think about it, when, when it comes to the customer journey and successfully reaching their, their intended audience, I don't think that that, it doesn't get a lot of, of talk, but it's a kind of an important one. And the, as the post purchase is also an element of it. And it, um, what what should they be thinking about in terms of the customer journey and marketing and their marketing? Yeah, I mean, I think it's you're trying to think through the entire experience across the board. And honestly, I think putting yourself in the shoes of your customer is probably the best approach to that. So it's like as I'm discovering something or researching something, you want to find a way to reach a customer that way, whether it's a display ad that you buy, whether it's something on social within your own social platform, there's definitely interesting ways of getting in front of a customer before they ever even decide to purchase something. Then it's, hey, like as you begin to discover, which really is where marketing kind of comes in, right? It is, again, email, you like when they come into your store today, do they know about everything that you have to offer? Or when they go on your site today, do they even know everything that you have to offer? Like, how are you using your interaction points with them to share a further message or a further story with them? Again, using your associates is another point in the customer journey. Um, is that answering the question? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Sort of the salute and being a solution and continuing the converse, continuing the conversation and engagement that yeah. serves the customer. Yeah, you just want to do it. It's really an end-to-end -end thing. It's like from the moment you research that you might even be interested in something all the way towards a uh, post-transaction and like we call it more of an onboarding thing. It's like as soon as you're part of our family and our network and we know who you are, we need to tell you more, right? So part of it is welcoming you, telling you other capabilities that we have or things that you might be interested in based on something that you purchased or a solution or a piece of content that you read online. Like how do you further engage with them so that you constantly share that same story? And this is obviously relevant to B2B and B2B, B2C companies. Oh, um, I mean, I think, you know, even as our staples kind of behemoth, I, you know, I think it's one of those that like, we're talking to like end consumers for sure. And we're also talking to small businesses and we're talking to small businesses knowing they are talking to a consumer. I think, you know, the, the shipping example that we gave is probably a good one where we shared that story around, hey, small business, like we know you need shipping supplies. Like that is just something that you need. You need the note cards that go in there. You know, you, you need the banners, you need everything like from a print and marketing kind of standpoint. But it's not just about that. It's the fact that we know that small business, the way they're going to resonate with their customer is through this amazing unboxing experience. So when they open a product, they're like, wow, I have this awesome handwritten note from this business. I see beautiful packaging from this business. I see a consistent brand message from this business. Like it's it's yeah. the soup and nuts experience that I think resonates best. All right, we have more questions for you. You're very popular. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, I will do my best. When you're when you're a marketing team of one, how do you prioritize and think about integrated marketing without getting stuck in the everyday content creation? Yep. That is um, that is a very good question. I think content creation is one of the biggest struggles, no matter what. Um, you know, and content can have a very broad meaning. I will say that just to make sure that we level set on what content can mean. So content can be the photography that you use, videos that you use, animations that you use, written long form articles, little testimonials from customers. Like all of that is content you can play with, which is awesome. But creating that repository and keeping it current is um, is not easy. So I think, you know, find, if you can create a website experience where people can share feedback, that is oftentimes a nice way where you can, obviously with that person's permission, you can use that as a little bit of a testimonial or a way that somebody can speak to that. All of a sudden that becomes content. You can sometimes even leverage, let's say you have um, friends or family, like it doesn't even have to necessarily be associates, leverage your network to help tell your story especially as you're getting started, 
all the way through to when you're like, you know, let's say you have a hundred or a thousand people there. That really comes down to the idea of your biggest marketing asset by far is your network, is your people. So finding a way for them to help create content. As an example, we recently had a piece of content that was written by one of our head of creative, um, one of their friends. And it was all about like STEAM and STEM. And they're an expert in that industry. And we literally got the article and all of the knowledge through them. You know, and it's it didn't necessarily take a, a big investment. It took a bit of time to figure out the right players that are telling the relevant story. But it's not always a money game. It's definitely a time investment game. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. And I think it's figure out the main message that you want to get across to your customer. Then from there, figure out how do you tell a story where it's not just I'm selling X, here's X. You know, it's like, all right, yes, I'm trying to sell this. What is the bigger need that I'm trying to solve with it? Is there an interesting piece of content that would live well with what I'm trying to share as a solution? And focus in on pulling together one story at a time versus on kind of like boiling the ocean, which I think is, I think all of us struggle with that. There's no doubt whatsoever. But I would focus on one story at a time and helping that be the way that you prioritize. Just to revisit that and talk about when you talk about storytelling and you had that sort of compelling story of Sips Herbal and how they share their brand story, their origin story as a black owned alternative yep. coffee brand and um, across platforms, across digital, across physical. And it's interesting how there's, you know, analysts talk about the three C's, the connection, curation and convenience and culture, I think, in terms of connecting with shoppers today. Um, so I'm, you know, you also mentioned using organic. So I'm, I'm wondering how much of this is about storytelling um, that's uh, user generated content and how, how you think about that. Uh, and also sort of up serving as opposed to up selling when you're, when you're communicating to reach um, your audience. So, uh, and let's hit on the um, organic piece of it first. I just want to make sure I'm answering it correctly. Um, the organic piece, I think, is it's your low hanging fruit. OK, so I, I say that in the sense of you want to make sure that everything that you own, that you don't necessarily have to pay a lot of extra money into. Yes, sometimes you have to build a website. Some of the bare bare bones necessities of getting started are there, but it's not like paying on ongoing fee for paid social or something like that. Your own channels like your own Facebook page, your own Instagram page, your own TikTok page, your own email, you know, your associates. Again, I come back to that one. All of those are your low hanging fruit. You want to make sure that they are always sharing that same overarching message. They stand for the same thing for your brand. They are talking the talk in a consistent way. That is, I mean, you that is like the number one thing that you want to take care of because it is so much in your control, right? Mm -hmm. Then it's when you start looking at kind of additional ways of doing it, right? So it's like you can go into the, the non-organic realm of, I mean, as an example, you could do paid social or you can pay for an influencer to share a bit of the solution that you have, but through their voice. That's, um, you know, stuff that it takes a little bit of extra money. But if you're trying to break into a new space or if your brand name is not known or maybe you're known for one thing and not something that you're trying to break into, Sometimes you need to go down those avenues to get there because, you know, people, they may not naturally like incline to look at your organic channels to get there. So that's, I'm hoping answers like a bit of the organic piece of it. You asked a question on the tail end. I just want to make sure you said something about upselling. I just, can you repeat that piece of it? Yeah. I the idea about serving and, and you know solution we talked about solutions and being a being of service and um and I was thinking about how user generated content sometimes does that because mm -hmm. because you are showing you know the need um by everyday people um mm -hmm. that that is a hundred percent our preference we would love it if our customers created UGC for us all day long it would be the greatest thing on the entire planet and I would encourage that all day long from your customers if you can, you know, if they can post on your social and you can repost, great. Yeah. You know, if, um, like, as I mentioned, if you could put a note card in something that you ship to them that encourages them to share their unboxing experience on social, great. You know, like all of those things, you can then share it again and say, hey, so-and-so had a great experience. 
And then other customers are looking at that and they, they love it. I mean, that's exactly what they want to see. They want to see that people have a good experience with a brand. I mean, the There's same nothing thing. Nothing like. For, so oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, you go first. No, I was saying that um, uh, it's the best way to do it is really through word of mouth, right? And that's another form of it. UGC is basically that way where it's like, I heard the, something from a friend or I saw something online where somebody had a wonderful experience. It is just an extension of that. And you know that you're just much more likely to interact with a brand when somebody has a positive experience in that way. No question. Social, the social validation versus company fed marketing messages. Um, yeah, we, we see the difference. Okay, we have another question for you. How would you design the social media programs or campaign differently for a firm offering services versus a company who's selling products? Uh, that is a excellent question because we we do both. Um, so and I, I understand that that's actually um, that is actually a big challenge, right? So for example, with Staples, like we sell like traditional products that you like traditional tools for your business, but we also sell services. So it actually applies quite a bit to honestly a business of any size where you can have a solution around a product for sure. You can also have a solution around a service. So it depends on what your service is. And I almost want to ask that as a follow up question. But um, so the service, let's say a service in this case is we are selling print and marketing services, right? So we're trying to do print. The same way that you would want to tell a story around a product, you would want to tell a story through print. Show how the service allows for an end product for that customer, that's amazing. Show how that service allows for something great to happen for that customer. It's still that same storytelling, it's just done so through the lens of, hey, use this service to be able to get to this kind of solution versus using this product to get to a solution. It's still the same storytelling angle. So that doesn't change at all between the product and the service. But I also understand that selling a service is, um, it's not as tangible, it's not. So you really, you have to find a way to make it more tangible for somebody. And that's something that, again, you can use testimonials, you can use people's experiences, you know, you can show finished product. Let's say I, I mentioned the print and marketing example, we can show finished menus or a finished brochure or a banner that is just beautiful. And let's say it's a grand opening banner. You show that all of a sudden that is a grand opening banner on that, on that business. Like it takes it from the service that you're offering all the way to the end product where a customer is actually literally showing it and proud of what they just did for themselves. So I think it's, it's yeah. turning the yeah. intangible into something tangible. Ah, that's terrific. Um, I'm I know we talked about, we talked about maximizing every customer touch point. I'd love to just sort of get a quick um, cheat sheet on each of the big touch points, right? So, you know, email marketing campaigns specifically, are there innovative, you know, um, really full, I don't want to say foolproof ways, but yeah, foolproof ways are really important, critical ways today that to make them effective and also measure, how are we measuring that effectiveness? So there's, are you talking about email specifically or really across any other touch point? Specifically, I thought we could hit, hit on some of the big ones, that, direct mail, and then texting. Yeah, I mean, I can speak to some of it. Obviously, we have, thankfully, we have a targeted marketing team on our side of the house that has incredible expertise, which is awesome, so we rely heavily on them. But when it comes to email, number one, you want to have some form of email deployment kind of vendor that you would use, and it would be different for a small business versus a large company. But they can help you understand, you know, Engagement, like not so much looking at open and click rates, because sometimes that's something that is just, it's a little bit, I'd say, outdated in terms of the kind of information that you'd get out of it. But if you can look at um, like next level down kind of information. So for example, it's, hey, they open, they clicked, and they engage with this kind of information within the email. So, you know, we had a content article and they cared more about that. We had an offer, they cared more about that. That's something that, we are looking at where it's, it's almost like click level reporting that allows you to just get one step lower to figure out like what are our customers actually interested in so i think that's like one aspect of measurement um 
The other is, I mean, there are technologies that allow you to look at like foot traffic. So, so and so opened an email, and within X amount of weeks or months, they ended up in our store. So you can have almost like an attributed kind of measurement where it's like I sent something out to them, they saw it, they opened it, and they went into our store. So I can kind of say that maybe because they sent an email, they went into our store. It's not guaranteed because it's not incremental. It's it's just saying this happened and this happened around the same time. So therefore, they are related to each other. So that's just another form of measurement when it comes to that. But I think the first, the first, what you first said was, which was, um, well, both things were important, but the whole notion of engagement. Oh, yeah. Right? Look at the engagement as opposed to that, which is maybe not so obvious all the time. Correct? No, it, the engagement is key. I mean, that's the thing. And it's, it does, it actually probably is worthwhile to either take your own time or to potentially invest in somebody's time to look at a little bit of that engagement activity because that's going to allow you to figure out what element of a story that you're looking to tell are they engaging in, you know, and then you can potentially do more of that, you know, and that's the only way you're going to find that out is by looking at that level of information. But, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I think email is one component and I, I wouldn't necessarily, you know, rely solely on the information that you're going to get through that. You know, you want to make sure that you're looking at, you know, social metrics that, you know, any of the social platforms would be able to give to you. Um, you know, website, you want to look at Google Analytics or, you know, whatever analytics company is tied to your website to figure out, hey, when they go to this page, how much time are they spending on it? Are they scrolling down to look at additional information? Are they going and exploring additional pages on my site? Yeah. You know, do they, where, where are they interacting most? Because that will allow you to just take a little bit more time to invest in that or to discover why they're doing it. Um, you know, it's like it all, it all uncovers something. Uh, direct mail, good old fashioned, going old school now, direct mail uh, has been, you know, interestingly, recently, it's been a lot of data. There's been some examples about it because been a really effective customer retention tool um, and a way to break through the clutter. And I'm curious if we had to sort of boil down a little bit what the essential elements of a direct mail campaign include today that that are good for small businesses to, to hear about, to, to know and to, to think about in the era of digital communications? Yeah, I would say direct mail is almost has like a second life, which is pretty incredible. Like I think a lot of people, you know, if you think back like 10 years ago, maybe even more, direct mail became this thing where like, please put all my mail on hold. I literally never want to get another piece of mail. <laughs> then we moved into the era of, you know, now, now we're more in the era of like, please don't send me another email, put them all on hold, I'm not interested. And now people are actually more willing to get, you know, magazines and catalogs and things like that in the mail. So it is funny how the times kind of evolve and change, but for direct mail today, I mean, the things that I think are most important is, again, a really solid message that you're looking to get across to that customer. Um, so just depends on obviously what you're looking to stand for, for a brand, but it's like, tell a little bit of your story. Who are you and what are you looking to do? And then it's, what is the call to action? You always want to have a call to action. You don't ever want to leave a direct mail that's like open-ended. It has to have something that you're looking for that customer to do. Is it a QR code that drives to your digital experience? Is it an offer that you want somebody to actually come into a store or go online and actually shop? You always want to have a CTA. Um, don't ever leave a direct mail without one. Um, and then also play around with form factors. I think that's the other thing that's kind of just a fun thing that you can do with direct mail that you can't obviously do with some other things where, you know, whether it's different shapes or the way something opens or, you know, whether it's like vertical, horizontal, like, you know, where you put an offer, you know, where you have a main message, beautiful, creative, like things that catch your eye. You definitely want to stand out from the crowd, but I feel funny enough, I think if anything, direct mail probably stands out more now than any of your digital. Um, yeah, digital. it's fascinating. So we have a we have a follow up here. Um, what platforms, yes, but what platforms would you use in that program for services or product versus products? What 5M, um, 5M program, sorry. The types of programs would you use for those services versus products? I believe um, this was a, the follow up to the earlier question about. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll tell you that I actually think that it would be the same touch points, whether it's um, services versus products, because you're telling your story. So it, it wouldn't necessarily matter um, from that standpoint. Um, 
when when you would use either. And I, again, it potentially comes down to what kind of business you have. There could be something you're just not thinking of. But the way we're approaching selling our services versus the way we're approaching solution selling of our products is one and the same. It's through a story. It's through a connection point to your customer. And then it is literally using that consistent message across every possible touch point that you have. So it doesn't it doesn't change across the board. Reminder to our audience to put your questions in the chat. We don't have too much more time with Simona. So um, I have another one. So text, we're seeing uh, text-based marketing taking on some life. Uh, and it's interesting how we're seeing it from startups. There's a beverage startup brand called Iris Nova that only texts and takes orders via text, exclusively text. And then Walmart just announced that they're going to be testing a test text that's a tongue twister <laughs> text to shop for the holidays so i'm really curious about what you think small businesses should know or think about in terms of text-based marketing um so, doing, doing it effectively and and successfully um so a couple of things there um usually with text based and i think it's evolving a little bit but usually with text based, it has been very offer and transactional based. So I would use it more for that. And it's funny, like I think even your Walmart example, it's not like they're looking to tell a story. They're looking for you to engage with like a, a shopping experience or transactional experience. So I think if you kind of consider touch points that might be a little bit more transactional, I think text is a good one. I mean, I get I probably get three texts a day from a couple of different, you know, businesses that I follow where it's like, $20 off today on X or, you know, come in over the next three weeks, you can get 20% off on something, but it leans much more heavily into the transactional world. Um, I would just say, I would encourage you to make sure that that is one of many touch points that you use and that you don't lean only on that transactional piece of it. Cause I think that will, it's just short lived. That's the big part of it. It's very short term win and short term gain. It will not necessarily drive, you know, engagement with your brand loyalty um, at the end. So definitely worthwhile and always a good measure to take from more of a transactional perspective, but make it one of many, not kind of the only channel that you use. As a supplemental kind of communication. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, curious about what just leading into the holiday season, the biggest time of the year where businesses do a disproportionate, um, and you know this better than anybody, right? Um, a uh, percentage of their business. What what do you what are you feeling in terms of what's different out there and what's what's important? What are the opportunities for small businesses for the holiday? We talked about local and the the incredible affection for local retail now and um, what that might mean and from a marketing point of view that was would not have been really conceivable a year ago that the the mood of the of of the consumer has changed, the mood of the business community has changed, leaning into yeah. holiday opportunities. Yeah, I think the the whole like shop local movement, uh, honestly, I hope it's here to stay. And I, it feels like there's this like, so there's so much love for that angle. So I think that's going to be a big part of kind of this entire holiday season is really around this like shop local mentality, which not only includes like, you sharing the fact that you're a small business and encouraging people to shop local because there's that angle. The other is you sharing other local businesses and, you know, kind of like holding hands in that sense and creating almost a community vibe. And it's funny, one of my favorite restaurants called Little Big Diner, um, I love, and they have sister restaurants and, you know, actually places that are nearby along their main street, that kind of thing. They are all sharing each other's stories and almost like giving each other virtual high fives. I think doing a bit of that, not only is it, it just feels like you're paying it forward, but it creates like such a good vibe around the holiday season and it really extends the entire shop local approach. That's so interesting that you said that because there is this notion that I've heard more about the partnership economy. I mean, you have big, this is, you know, the big retailers are partnering with one another. It's the weirdest thing. It's oh. wonderful. Oh, you see these shopping shops in new ways, Macy's and Apple and Toys R Us and this one, and, and you're seeing that and like, you know, the and the, um, I'm, I've also heard this term, the passion economy, and it's kind of all coming to, to a head in an interesting way. I mean, the, the buy local movement's been going on forever, but something has changed now. Oh. So 
Uh, definitely, 100%. And then I think it kind of depends on what industry you're in and your size and all that. But, you know, one of the examples that we gave, it's like, if you can give an opportunity to give prominence to some of your customers that could also be a small business, that's another amazing thing that I think you can do this time of year. It's just it's a little bit of like sharing the message through your platforms, but being able to give some love to other small businesses that um, engage with you as a brand. Absolutely. We're all in it together. Uh, so somebody said, cool idea with sister locations. I've heard more about people supporting small store shops with buying gift cards as gifts. I'm sorry, um, maybe, maybe I missed the question. Yeah, I, th I think that the idea, just a, a comment about, um, you know, the idea of sister locations and, and hitching your brand to your, or your shop to another shop and, and kind of integrating like gifts cards, like, you know, one store will share another store's gift card and, and yeah, opportunities. You know, I think there, that's definitely an opportunity. It's also just, it creates a sense of community around you. So, I, I mean, I've seen it locally in my town that we do that. Um, you know, it's like, so and so, like the, the dog groomer, funny enough, has like information on other you know places that are near it, right? Like the restaurants yeah. talk about each other. Um, I think it all is related to the fact that people just want to be able to support each other. So, yeah, I mean, it will not hurt for you to go to your neighbors and to say, hey, like this is something that I'm doing over this holiday time frame. Well, would you be willing to share it with your customers? Yeah, it will, it will never hurt you to do something like that. And we're seeing we're seeing this come in in the in the in the chat. We uh, Lori has, uh, says we have had great success partnering with local chambers and direct mailing, and agree, somebody else said agreeing with supporting each other's businesses. Absolutely. Um, I'm cu always curious about what you. I then didn't plan to ask this, but I'm always like, what brands or what businesses do you see doing things? Do you admire? Out, it doesn't you know outside of it doesn't. Um, and why and what, what are they doing right in marketing that that would be of interest to a small business or a medium sized business that could be, you know, meaningful takeaway. So I think there's a couple. Um, so I am like literally like a, a living, breathing, walking ambassador for Rothy's. So if anybody's familiar with that shoe company, I just like I love them. Um, um, Rothy's. Yeah. Rothy's, yeah, which I have like no financial like, you know, play in that whatsoever. But I just I love them. And I think one of the reasons is they make things, their marketing is super simple. Their message is very simple. Um, the way they bring things to life is beautiful and engaging. They're purpose-led, which I think is another thing that people are really, they, they gravitate towards. So I think um, those are a couple of things just like with that one brand that stick, stick in mind. It's like, you wanna have a purpose and you wanna share it. And you wanna share it again across every touch point. And I think they do a wonderful job with that. Um, me interrupt you because people want to know this. I'm like, it's Rothy's R O T H Y Y apostrophe S. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> my, my favorite shoe company ever. I love. <laughs> um, so it's it's the best. But I think that they they do a really nice job. Um, I think that the way they um, just engage their audience, they the way they share information on like new things that they're diving into. Um, it's just it's interesting. They they give you like sneak peeks. Hey, you're like a VIP, and we're introducing something new. Like they just they make you feel special, and their shopping experience is very seamless. Um, you know, just honestly from an e-commerce standpoint, it's it's pretty awesome if you if you haven't done it. So I think that that experience alone I love. I think the other side of it is. I love brands that have a story that is relevant to me. And that can happen, honestly, across so many different players. And I think I mentioned, like, we're trying to do that too. Like, even with, like, Staples Retail, it's like, you want to have something that feels like it's connecting to the customer and some sort of need that they have. So just talking about something that you can probably get anywhere is really just not that helpful. It's like, help me understand how this is actually a relevant solution for me based on my needs. And I will probably listen. I really will. So that would be my encouragement is just connect to your audience, understand your customer, you know, and then just get that message going strong across every touch point. It's so true. And I think it speaks to what you said, which is what we, you and I talked about a little bit before, which is people won't remember necessarily what you say, but they remember how you made them feel. And that's so true for business. Like the one fuzzy feeling that a business generates you know, is not measurable per se, but it is measurable because there's so many brands that, that succeed because of that. 
and that could be the, the going the extra mile or, or you know or with Rafi's or the purpose or purpose driven whatever is but there is that 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 whole that's powerful um not necessarily so measurable but powerful um I'm curious about what's a, a um a, a marketing tip uh a be a, the best marketing tip or one, one that's not that's not obvious that's counterintuitive that that is like oh what i never thought that or it doesn't have to be so counterintuitive so just something that that um a little hack that comes to mind for a small business that um it doesn't have to be fancy um i find enough i think i i spoke to it a little bit i think the biggest thing that comes to my mind is that the natural inclination is for people to always think transactional first. My biggest opportunity that I think every company has is don't think that way. Like, yes, think about that way 10% of the time, 20% of the time, fine. There's so much more meaning in that 80% that is around who you are as a brand, what you're trying to do, and how you're trying to connect with your customer. And sometimes that means storytelling. It doesn't mean always attaching it to an offer and a transaction. That is something that I think is, it will pay dividends with time in terms of really building your customer base, building loyalty, building retention, building repeat purchase. It is just something that we successful. So I would, um, I would highly encourage that. And then, you know, I would continue to survey your customers. I think that's the other piece of it that we didn't necessarily hit on, but I think it's an important tidbit. And I wouldn't do it all the time because there will definitely be fatigue there, but periodically talk to them, whether it's literally like some associate that goes and has a conversation with somebody or do a more formal kind of survey through a provider, like a survey monkey or something like that, um, where you actually go and you survey them and understand how their experience is. And that way you put a stake in the ground and you just periodically, let's say every quarter, or every six months, you do something again, it will all of a sudden show you whether you're making strides with your brand. It's that, not going to show you the short-term transaction that's happening within the next two weeks. It's going to show if you're building brand perception, awareness, affinity with time. So highly that, encourage that. That is a perfect note to leave on. Find out who you're yeah. serving and what they want. I love it. Right? 100%, <laughs> I agree. So much fun. I, I could talk to you for another hour. Thank you so much. Um, thank, our audience, thanks. Uh, please thank Simona. She was just terrific. Um, and our, that's all the time we have for this session. Uh, our next workshop is on building and perfecting a social media strategy. And you'll learn how to up your social media content and strategy. So please join that workshop by clicking the events hub link in the chat. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Simona. Thank you, everybody. It was great.